and all the fun. Hey, welcome to Brisbane Small Business Show. I'm Kevin Gummy. Today I've got with me Nathan Cito. He's from the Dot Mill. Now, the Dot Mill, really cool uh, IT company. Nathan's one of those guys that was a little bit of a geek at school. Hey, mate. Just a little. Now, you told me, you actually confessed before the show that you are a good enough geek at school to almost land yourself in jail or at least find. Yeah, I, uh, I I got suspended in school for doing stuff that I shouldn't on the computers. Come on, what were you doing, mate? Tell everyone. Uh, well, actually, I wasn't actually doing anything yet. I'd loaded stuff onto the computers that could do it because someone else had given it to me and I hadn't really checked it out yet. Then they found me with it and they're like, you were doing nasty stuff with this. I'm like, uh, not yet, but I guess I could have. You're about to sell pirated games. I know that the truth is. Uh, Hey, entrepreneur way back when, fantastic. Um, so one of these people was just naturally drawn into the whole IT world and the geeky world, uh, understood it really, really well. Uh, and, and, and obviously, um, you, you, said, you said that this uh, misguided almost transaction led to you being hired by the school. Yes. Uh, as soon as I was able to apply and they opened it up, uh, I applied to be an IT trainee and uh, they, they let me in, which was good. Uh, I guess they'd prefer that I use my, uh, my powers for good rather than evil. After his probation was over, he got straight into <laughs> being hired by the school. Um, awesome. Now, you know, the whole world of, you know, if something happened to your laptop, right? It's one of those things that nobody ever thinks about until they have to think about it because, oh my God, They've just dropped their laptop and it's uh, broken into two pieces or something oh. else has happened. Hang on. Nathan's just all of a sudden had something urgent come up. Um, so, and it is, it's one of those things that we don't think about until we realise we have to think about it. And when we have to think about it, it's all super duper urgent. So tell well, us, there's lots of different reasons though why we really should be thinking about this more seriously, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, like for one, like most of us eat and drink at our computer. Like um, I mentioned to you that we're currently doing a tech live stream every day. We're actually calling that our tech happy hour. So we're inviting people to grab a drink, come sit down with us and uh, we're answering your tech questions 100% for free. But like that means that we have a drink, we're at the computer. Like what happens if something were to go wrong? So we got a laptop here, we got a drink, like what hey, they can't see that you poured that onto your computer, but he actually poured that glass of water onto his computer. Oops, now, I'm sure hand. that Nathan actually has a waterproof computer, I'm guessing. Yep. That one's dead. Um, and yeah, for a lot of people, yeah. your heart probably just sank because you're like, I really don't want that to happen to me. Yeah. Um, I'd probably be in the same boat if that was actually a laptop I cared about. Um, Although actually, because I have all these things that I'm about to tell you in place, probably not so much. You just encouraged me to move my glass of water, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> so, so we're talking about two different things. One, we're talking about cybersecurity, and two, we're also talking about the physical side of things and everything else. But I'm a yep. small business. Really, should I con be concerned with cybersecurity? Uh, definitely, for sure. Like um, everyone thinks it won't happen to me, like, you know, I'm just one person, a single person running a small business, who's going to care about me. Um, but fact of the matter is, if you're running a business, that means like both of us now, you're putting yourself out there. You're more in the public eye and being more in the public eye, if you're then associated with the business, even if it may or may not be true, people assume that you have more money or more money available because you're you know, covering the expenses of running a business and you're not working a job. So you feel like you're making more money for yourself or you are making more money for yourself than you would in a day job. So it makes you more of a target and it makes you a publicly visible target. So yeah, it, it's, it's something you don't want to think about, but it's something that definitely happens. Absolutely. It's something that we've really got to think about. So you've actually developed a, a, a five point checklist or yes. in relation yep. to this. Yes. So, so uh, and we're having a bit of chat. I'm even going to bring up your little screen here. Uh, and we'll try and keep us all on it at the same time um, yep. so that we can do that. There you go. Cool. How tricky was that? If your laptop should happen to die. Yep. Like that one just then. It's, yeah, it's not happy now. Um, 
anyway, so there are like endless options that you could consider for security. You could go like, you could fortify your thing to the teeth, like armor plating on your laptop if you really wanted to, that kind of thing. Probably don't need that. Um, but there's endless options. There's no such thing as one size fits all, but hopefully these five steps will at least give you a general idea of what to look at. And then you can decide what is or isn't important and going to work for you. Some of these things you may have covered already without knowing it, without meaning to, that kind of thing. And if uh, people need a download very, very soon, Nathan's going to have one, but he doesn't just yet. But yes, we I will have that, that ready for you shortly. So step one, let's go. All right. Step one, well, step one, oh, that was a belief. It will never happen to me, which most people believe. Um, oh, the other see, thing I forgot I... to mention is that if you have um, a data breach, well, sorry, first of all, downtime. Downtime is money, because time is money. If this happens to you and you're down and out, you can't do anything, you can't generate income. <laughs> um, but the other thing I was going to mention is that if you have a data breach, if your data is compromised, legally you are required to notify your customers and the people involved in that, and I'm pretty sure you have to report that as well. Otherwise, you can now, get if you're, some massive if fines. you've got a corporate structure, so if you're if you've got a proprietary limited business and that sort of stuff, and that's what you work through, yes. the fines are massive, aren't they? Uh, yes, I believe so. I can't remember the exact figure, but I think it's a five-figure sum. Yeah, I, I think it was something like uh, you know, $320,000 or something ridiculous like that. There was It was what is actually more than the average income of a uh, annual income of a small business uh, is what the fines are. So you need to, yeah. there's, there's a process that you need to go through if you do get breached. And I'm sure Nathan's got a cheat sheet on that too. Um, but moving right along, the next reason? Um next reason for why this is important they're pretty much the big ones um people like I yeah. said, people will believe it'll never happen to them you're more of a target being a business your time is money and there's the legal requirement and potential fines if you don't like if something goes really That's really cool. really wrong so what's the next screen you got nathan uh okay the next one that i've got is the first step which is to check in with your uh quote unquote gatekeeper so your gatekeeper isn't a physical person in this case because we're talking about your digital world. Um, your gatekeeper is things like, first of all, you need to know where your data is because once you know where your data is, then you know who's keeping the gate, so to speak. So once you've identified where your data is, whether that's a single laptop with or a computer that multiple people have access to, you have a server or your data is all stored online, once you do that, then you need to consider how is it accessed? So who has access to it for one, if it's not just you? Um, and then two, what's involved to get access to it? So for most people, um, this is a password. But then with your password, you need to make sure, there's a few things you need to make sure of. You need to make sure that your password is effectively being, like I said, an effective gatekeeper and keeping people out when it should. So I shouldn't use password as my password? No, generally not. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, I have seen that quite a lot. Thankfully, not so much in business, more personal stuff, but yeah, it does happen. Um, I have seen some businesses though with very, very simple passwords, like one, two, three, four and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, password complexity is a thing because easy passwords to guess are almost the same as not having a password at all. And don't use the name of your dog either. That's one of the first. Uh, yeah, that, that's the next point I have actually is um, don't use things that are familiar to you. So don't use your birthday. Don't use your kids' names, your wife's name, your own name, pet's name, stuff like that. Um, because people don't realize that it's actually a lot easier to get and guess people's passwords using what's called social engineering than to actually go and hack them by guessing like just plain out of the blue guessing. If they know you, if they know your details, then they can try all the common things first. And it's a lot quicker and easier to get in than having to actually hack it out of the system. So it's really important not to use your street address and things like that. Yeah, that's that's probably a little bit more secure because people don't often do that. But yeah. I, say, I didn't that. say that. Anyone that's listening, I did not say that. <laughs> Um, the other thing too that people don't realize is that instead of password, you can actually use a pass phrase. So for example, if you're using brown fox hash 79 um, is less secure than using the quick 
uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. But the past phrase is easier to remember than the past word, but being longer, it's more complex. Um, and the other thing with passwords is on top of your passwords now, a lot of uh, services offer what they call two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. So you need an additional code, which usually goes to either a text message or an app on your phone. Um, Microsoft had a bunch of security breaches in the first, was it the first month or the first quarter? Earlier this year, they reported Microsoft accounts that are being breached was a certain number, but out of those accounts, less than 1% had two-factor or multi-factor authentication enabled. So you significantly reduce your risk of being compromised if you use that. Um, for something like so, the accounting package zero, it's now compulsory to have that enabled to get in. For things like zero, you have to have it. it it's yep. a real pain in the backside yep. until you realize that it's probably saved you from being hacked and then it's awesome. Yes, yep. It can be a lifesaver. Cool. So, like the next thing. so the gatekeeper's awesome. Next, anything else in the gatekeeper? Uh, no, that's it. That's that's awesome. it for gatekeeping. Next, what do we got next? Uh, next is to fortify your walls. So once you know where all your data is and you've checked in with the gatekeeper, uh, then you actually need to protect where your data is stored. So if this is on your computer that you look after, you don't have someone who looks after it for you, uh, you need to make sure that you install all those pesky Windows updates that reboot in the middle of whatever you're working on when you leave the computer for two seconds. Um, those are actually important. As painful as they are, they as soon as um, developers find the security, um, what's it called, vulnerabilities. They fix them, and that's what those Windows updates are. People don't realize that. People are just like, they're just doing it to be a pain. Oh, no, they want, they want to do it at the most inconvenient. Look, it is. It's always when you need to um, log off and take your computer to your next very, your very next meeting, which you're already running late for, and yeah. that's when it wants to do, like, and it seems to be a half-hour update at that point in time. I can promise you, A, it's not half an hour. It's only probably 45 seconds. It feels like but half an hour, though. It feels like half an hour. It is really important. Just call your appointment and say, yeah. I'm going to be another three minutes late. Yeah. Yep, for sure, because that's important. Um, that's other things that are not so disruptive, keeping your antivirus up to date, which usually happens automatically, and that doesn't disrupt you whatsoever. But making sure you have one is important. Um, thankfully, Windows has one built in now, but it's not necessarily the best. It will stop viruses, but it won't do a lot of other things. So look into that and consider your options for that. Um, the other thing too, which sort of with goes the, hand with, in hand. So I've got a question there. So with the antivirus yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. There's free versions and there's paid versions and quite often the same with the same company. And yeah. look, we all always have our conspiracy theorists that, you know, on the paid ones, they send viruses to you the day after you haven't renewed your thing but let's get over that in a heartbeat yeah. um is it worthwhile the paid ones um it depends a lot of people have asked me this and i've always said that the free ones do just fine unless there's a particular feature that you want uh all of them free or paid will still protect you from viruses there are threats beyond viruses and other things that are a possibility um that may be worth considering that's something that you'd have to evaluate for yourself or get help with evaluating and see if you do or do uh, do or don't need those features. And that's a risk analysis. Hey, a lot of these paid ones will cost you about 80 bucks a year. So yeah. by my last calculation, bad. that was around, uh, you know, 360 divided by 80, um, somewhere around, you know, a few cents a day. Yeah, it's not a lot. Even then, even if you don't want to pay for them, at least start with the free ones because some protection is better than none. It may not apply for you. You may not need it, but like the paid one, but at least if you've got the free one, you've got that level of protection there. And we definitely aren't taking that joke any further. So fortify your walls, right? Get some, uh, know where your data is. Make sure that you understand the different, let's talk geeky and go protocols are in place to protect your stuff. Uh, that you know how to get it when uh, if, if the world crumbles. Yep. So oh, what's with, the next thing? Well, with the fortify your walls as well, hand in hand with the gatekeeper, make sure, like I said, you know who has access to it. Don't allow too much access to it. So don't just give the password, like your administrator password to the entire staff. If you've got staff, if you're doing that kind of thing or hand it over to everybody. Um, and the other I thing- is so much with trouble with here. <laughs> We'll talk later. Um, and the other thing to consider is physical security. So make sure that, you know, anything is secure. Don't leave your laptop in the car with it unlocked or, you know, 
plain visible, like when you're out at the shops or something, um, don't leave your server on the front counter if you've got that kind of setup because someone could smash and grab that while you're not there or just grab it while you're not looking. Yeah, the backup like thing. You know that little black box that you've probably got that yeah. you changed over once in the last 23 <laughs> years? Yep. That one. Yeah, those things. Make sure they're you secure. You probably need to check if that works from time to time and you need to have a chat with someone like Nathan to do that. Um, you definitely know when it stops working because everything goes dead. Oh yeah, you awesome. don't want that to happen either. But that can so apply to this. But yeah, anyway, our next point is to write in secret code. And I'm not talking that you should write uh, everything that you do in Morse code or in a secret code with the crypt. There's technology that will do that for you. So for your files, wherever you're storing those, make sure it's encrypted if it's important. Um, there are options for that, which we can talk about if you want to later, uh, including some that are built into Windows. Um, so you don't even need to pay anything. You've probably got that option available already. You might actually have it running already and not even know, but you need to check up on that and make sure that it is or isn't there. Um, and your other thing is, um, this one is a VPN, which gets thrown around a lot. And I'm not going to go into the technical details of how that works, but basically if you're, um, working from somewhere other than your usual place of business, or even if you are working at your usual place of business and maybe you have something like guest Wi-Fi or you're scared that people can access your stuff, um, then use a VPN because that encrypts everything as it's transmitted back and forth. So VPN, that's a virtual private network? Yes. Um, and it, now in the market, that's, there's- That's about as much geek as I speak there, Nathan. <laughs> There's two levels to this now because everyone started using VPNs to access uh, things like US Netflix, um, which is what it was. It's not what it was ever designed for. Um, it was designed to make network communication secure. So between one point to another. Um, and in this case, that's what we're talking about. Anything that you transmit out of your computer to somewhere else or out of your internet connection to somewhere else, uh, you want it encrypted. Like I said, if, if you're worried about security vulnerabilities at your usual place of business or if you're out somewhere else. Cool. And we didn't talk about that uh, US Netflix on this show ever. Okay, everyone? Yeah. Didn't uh, talk about that. I'm pretty um, sure that so writing secret code for so your virtual private network. Yeah. Yep. Next point. The next one is to know your blueprint. So once you've reviewed all this stuff and know it, make sure that you know, uh, one, what hardware you have. And then two, in combination with your gatekeeping, you know, well, and the fortifying your walls, you know where everything is, you know how to get into it. Um, and then you know how to get access to it. So this would also then include a disaster recovery plan. So in the event that something does go wrong, rest in peace, my laptop, um, then you can rebuild and go again. So you know exactly what to look for. Um, so you know what hardware you need to replace, you know where to pull your data back from, which includes a backup plan. Uh, if you don't have backup, you really need that because otherwise all of this falls flat on its face. Um, yeah, and, and your backup, people don't realize, people are like, I have an external hard drive and I have all my backup on that. It's like, that's great, but your backup, uh, the backup, the common backup method or procedure that, that we always tell everyone is three, two, one. You need three copies of your data. You need that on at least two different types of media, so external hard drive and say cloud storage. Um, and you need at least one of those to be offsite, which is really simple. And people don't, but people don't think about it. People just are like, I have one backup, I'm good to go. You need three copies, two different media. It'd be unusual for the cloud site. storage to be on site though. So yep. awesome. Yep. So your, your um, cloud storage takes care of one of your backups. It is a different media and it is off site. So cloud storage already hits three of those boxes. Fantastic. And the other thing is that the better your blueprint, the quicker you can bounce back. So if you have everything lined out step by step, how to rebuild your computer, like install everything, everything you need installed, then uh, and replaced, then you can just go down the list and go, I do this, 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 and this, and I'm back. And having a cool blueprint will also help you save money. I'm going to go to. Uh, yes. Well, because yeah. you'll see when you double uh, double dipping, you'll you'll see when you're paying for things twice, right? So yes. you know. Uh, things like Office 365 have so many other little programs inside of it now. If you're doing a blueprint with all these different things that you've got, you can check if Office 365 has different versions that you could do that with. And you yep. can then stop paying for the extra paid version 
because you're already paying for it once. So yeah. just a little tip there, help you save money. So doing this yeah. work, it's time consuming, absolutely, once. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just add new stuff in as you go. But doing it well, you could actually save yourself literally thousands of dollars a year. Yeah. Well, the other thing with that, because you mentioned Office 365, a lot of people don't know that your Office 365 subscription, your business one, usually automatically includes one terabyte of cloud storage through OneDrive already. So just start dumping files into that if you want a quick and easy backup that is offsite and a different type of media. So you can do so that now. So you don't now. need Dropbox. You don't need your extra storage. You don't need all of these different things because you've already yeah. got that. Yeah. And I, I actually has, use OneDrive over Dropbox because I've already paid for Office 365. And it also has this thing called Teams, which can replace your whole Zoom thing. So if you're paying yeah. Yeah. for a Zoom subscription, you could, once you train yourself on Teams uh, appropriately, you don't need you don't need to pay your you know ten bucks or eighty bucks a month for that, and there's a thousand yep. bucks a year. Yeah, thank you. Ken. Yep, that's very true. Good point. Um, the other thing too is that um, you mentioned overlaps and stuff. If you actually do a full audit of all your computer hardware, you might realize it's like I've got six computers and three people. I'm like, well, we can get rid of that one, that one, and that one then, because we only need one computer per person. Um, the other thing too is that if you put a date on it, you might actually realize how long you've had something for and when it needs to be replaced. Because uh, IT definitely doesn't that last forever. That brings you to point five, dollars. I do believe. Yep, sorry? That brings you to point five. Next slide. Yes, yep. That was it for point four. Point five is R&R, &R, which unfortunately not is not rest and relax yet but once we finish oh. this then you can do that this is in the event that something goes wrong you need to rebuild and recover sorry replace and rebuild that one which includes recovery um so usually we tell people there's no use crying over spilt milk once it's done it's done if your laptop's stolen if it's died there's like just let it go there's if you're going to chase down the person who stole it if you don't know who it is that's going to cost you time a lot of time and possibly a jail sentence depending on what you do when you catch up with them um but yeah that just replace the hardware Go to your blueprint, go to your disaster recovery plan. You know what hardware you've got if you've done that. Just replace it and then pull all your data back from your backups, from wherever you have it, because you would have reviewed that in um, in the previous steps and you should have that documented then in your disaster recovery plan or your blueprints. You see, now Nathan's doing himself out a little bit of money here because I believe you should have another R in there. <laughs> Which one's that? You should have repair. You know how you drive your car around Mm. And you get it serviced every now and again, yeah? Yep. Yeah, that that is... I'm just saying, with your, with your laptop, you probably need to get a, a quick little tune-up every now and again from your IT guy. Uh, at least get them to dial in and have a look and see if uh, it's grinding to a halt slowly or if it's infected or all that sort of stuff. You know, it's only going to cost you a small amount of money. Uh, for them to do that. And that's yes, going to be right. like taking your car in to get service and get a quick little tune-up. It's yes. probably going to cost less than your car tune-up too. And yes. yet this is that that machine is the thing that produces all your income. Yes. So it's, it's probably important, important to make sure that you're on top of that. You probably want to do that at least once a year, like check up on it. If you're not doing it yourself, like you said, get someone else to check it for you, check over it, make sure it's all running right. Um, but yeah, if you're using it more, maybe do it more often, like every six months or something. But if you're not comfortable with doing any of this stuff yourself, then get someone else to do it for you. Um, the other thing too, though, if if you do have something that's failed, um, repair is an option sometimes. It may be worth repairing it as, to, as opposed to throwing it out and getting a new one. Uh, it just depends on exactly how bad the failure is. Most of the time, more often than not, it's a hard drive. And to replace that is probably only a couple of hundred bucks. At most cool so uh, just take it to an expert get them to have a look now nathan yep. from the dot mill he uh does uh all things geeky um more on the hardware side and making things run really really well yep. uh rather than web design and that sort of stuff but yep. literally if you're in the market for an it guy look i've I've really enjoyed our chat today, Nathan. You've shown me that you really do know what you're talking about and you've given some awesome tips that will help us uh, be in a much better pos position, a much safer position with uh, our systems. Um, yep. So thanks very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks for having me. I just want you, I just want you to think one more, one more thing. If 
your PC was just to be damaged normally, you've dropped it and it's broken in two, how would you recover? I'll leave you with that thought. Um, Nathan, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Nathan is going to get a checklist. He is going to add it to here um, very, very quickly uh, so that you can download. Here's the things that I need to check and, and, and things that we can cover. Uh, this afternoon, I'm actually going to talk to uh, Dave Chewy from Mind For Me. Um, I look forward to catching up with everyone again very, very soon. Thanks very much for your time, Dave. Nathan. Thanks. So I shouldn't mention anybody else before. <laughs> I... It's all good. Thanks.